Hey guys, welcome to this channel. This is Abhishek Mamadi. In this video, we will see commonly used transformations and actions on a PySpark data frame. And these are really helpful when you are doing EDA, exploratory data analysis, or when you are doing pre processing for modeling. So, transformations and actions are called as operations, right? Both of them come, comes under operations. And let's see what are the actions and what are the trans transformations. When you apply an action, you will get the output instantaneously. But when you apply a transformation, not get an output instantaneously and it will create a dam internally. And you will get the output only if you apply an action command. Okay. And some of the commonly used action commands are like show to show the data frame output. Let's say you have applied some transformations and you want to see the output, you have to apply show. And collect, this will give you all the rows in the data frame, output data frame. If you have filtered a data frame and you want to see the number of rows in those cases, you can directly use collect and count is to get the number of rows in that data frame. And commonly used transformations and functions include a distinct in a column, you want to see distinct values in that particular column, right? Uh, this is similarly unique values in pandas and with column. In general, we create a lot of columns from existing columns. Right. In those cases, we can use with column and create new columns. You can also apply if else conditions on set of columns and create this new column where we use f dot lit and when functions. I will show you how we can use this with column renamed. This is mainly used to rename columns, filter data. You want to apply some rules and filter the data set, right? In those cases, you can use filter and group by group by based on a categorical column and aggregate based on a numerical column something like that right this is also one of the popular ones which we always use let me start with setting up the PySpark environment you can skip this chapter if you want because if you are watching my previous videos you can skip this chapter and if you want more detailed analysis of this you can check out this video on setting up the PySpark environment let me run this command to set up the environment and then initialize spark session let me run these two cells now we have spark session ready and let's start the main video and to show you the transformations and actions we have to read some data and i am using in vehicle coupon recommendation which i have been using in my previous videos let me use wget to download the data set from uci and i am reading using spark dot read function we have the spark data frame and this is how it looks like let me import uh, functions, all the functions, and we can access these functions using f dot min, f dot max, etc. Let me run this. Okay, the first action command that I want to show you is dot show. We have been using this dot show uh, to show the data frame. See, what I am doing is we have a lot of columns, and I am selecting only some of the columns using dot select, and then to see the data frame output data frame after selecting those columns i am using dot show to show a uh, top rows this is like dot head in pandas data frame now the next action command is count this will help us to count the number of rows in your data frame it can be a filtered data frame or the original data frame it can be anything let me run this access the data frame spark df and use dot count which will give you the uh, number of rows we have 12.6 rows and we have collect. Collect will help us to get the aggregated result. Let's say uh, we have temperature column here, right? And we want to get the minimum value of the temperature. I am using dot aggregate function. So spark df dot aggregate. I am taking a minimum of temperature. Let me run this. Now we are not getting any output, right? Because this is just a transformation. So to get the output, we can use dot show. Of course, dot show will give you the output, right? 30. So here, I mean, while doing EDA, dot show will automatically work and we can just explore what's the minimum and maximum temperature. But in production, let's say when you are developing a code, then you cannot use dot show in middle of the code. In those cases, you want to extract the value, this 30 value from the output, right? In there, you can use dot collect. So dot collect will give you uh, all the rows. In the output so these these are the rows that we have and i am accessing this 30 value using this list where we will get 30 right so this will be really helpful to extract or access that particular output value 
and that's where collect will be helpful and if you apply collect on the complete data frame spark df data frame then you will get all the rows in that spark df data frame this is how you will get and you can use these to access different column values these are the most popular action commands uh, show count collect etc now let's go into transformations I am just printing the data frame here and there so that we can just track the data uh, how it is. The first transformation I want to discuss in this video is distinct. So distinct will help us to get unique values in a column. Um, you have gender. Let's say in gender you want to see what are the unique values or unique categories in this column. In those cases what I will do is I will select this column from the whole data frame dot select. Now I am selecting that particular column gender and then I will apply dot distinct dot distinct will give you the distinct values or unique values in that column. Let me run this and you got male and female as an output. So this is similar to dot unique that we use in pandas, right? And similarly, let's say you can also do it for passenger. It's a categorical variable, right? Let me run this and you should get some categories like alone, friends, partner, kids, etc. So this is how you can get uh, distinct values in a particular column. And this is very helpful when you're doing initial EDA on your data set. Let me just show you the top five rows. When we are pre-processing the data, we often create new columns and rename columns, right? That is where this with column and with column rename comes into picture. Let me show you uh, how to create a new column or constant columns. If you want to create a constant column with uh, value as full data, you can directly use lit function. For creating a new column, what you can do is, let me show you in action. So you can access this part data frame, right? And then let's use with column function, which with column, and you can give you a column name, the new column name that you want to create, constant underscore column, let's say, and what is the value that you want to give here? And I am using f.lit to populate a particular value in all the rows. It can be full underscore data or zero or one, anything, right? Now let me show the top five rows. And this will give you, this will create a new constant column and populate this full data value in all the rows. Now let me go back and run this and store in a new data frame, updated Spark DF. Let me run this and show the top three rows. This is fine. So uh, if you want to create a constant column, now you can directly use it. But if you want to map a particular value, so you have gender and you want to map female to zero and male to one. In those cases, you cannot use it. There you can use dot when. This is like if else condition, right? Or else apply function on a pandas data frame and you use a particular function. If gender is equal to female, uh, return 0 if gender equal to male return 1 otherwise return 2 something like that so similarly we can use with column and we are creating gender map where what we are saying is create this gender map by mapping gender column so if the gender column is female uh, return 0 when gender column is male return 1 otherwise this is like a else condition return 2 if these two conditions are not met let me run this and you should get, I am just sampling uh, some of the rows randomly so that we get to see male and female uh, in the top five rows and female is mapped to zero and male is mapped to one. This is how you can use dot one function when you are creating new columns using with column function. Awesome. Now let's see how we can rename columns. If you see this data frame in the raw data set itself, this passenger name is not correct right in those cases you want to rename that column and you can use with column rename to rename your column and the first value is the existing column name and the second value is the new column name that you want to rename to let me run this and it should rename passenger to passenger with the new column name and this is how you can use with column rename Similarly, you can rename other columns. If you want to rename some other columns, like uh, let's say, let me create a new one. And I want to rename 
constant column to const call. They should rename constant column to const call. Cool. And one more transformation that we often use is filtering data. You have a huge data set, right? In raw data set, it can be transactional data and it will be in GBs. And you just want to filter based on business rules or it can be anything, right? It may be for doing EDA or just uh, considering a specific data set or specific cohort. In those cases, filtering data is very important. Let's see what are the distinct values that we have in temperature. Even though it's a, a numerical value, I'm just printing or seeing our distinct values we have 55 80 and 30 so what i will do is i want to filter temperature when temperature is 80 equal to 80 i am accessing the data frame and i am filtering the data based on temperature when the value is 80 let me run this and you should see values uh, with 80 in temperature column because we have filtered for 80 and let's see number of rows before and after filtering before filtering, we have 12.6 k rows and after filtering, we have 6.5 k rows. Currently, we have just filtered for 80. Let's say you want to apply a range. So temperature greater than 45 and temperature less than 90. So you want to, you want the values that are between in this range where you can use and operation. You can also use or operation. Now, let me uh, run this where you will see. Um, in temperature, you have 55 and 80 because between 45 and 90, uh, only 55 and 80 falls in between, right? That's why you are able to see 55 and 80 in temperature columns. And let's see the uh, number of rows before and after filtering. We have 12.6 k rows and after filtering, we have 10.6 k rows because we have took uh, two values. That's why we are seeing more uh, rows here. Awesome. These are you can use filter function to filter a particular data frame based on some conditions and you can apply multiple conditions as well. How I have shown here using filter function. Let's go into group by and aggregating data frames. Let me print the data frame top three rows. Let me group by gender and show you the number of rows in each category. These similar to you can think this as value cones in pandas. So for female, you have 6.5 k rows and male, you have 6.1 k rows. There is a distribution out of 12.6 k rows in the data frame. Similarly, you can also see for temperature. Let's say for temperature, you want to see number of rows for each value. Like for 55, you have 3.8 k rows and 80, you have 6.5 k rows and 30, you have 2.3 k rows. So these though you can get the value counts and you can do group by on a particular column and see the number of rows. But of course, we don't want to see number of rows always. You want to aggregate based on a different column. Let's say for this category, you want to see minimum of a different column or maximum of a different column, right? In those cases, what we can do is we can group by based on a column, let's say gender, and I'm aggregating temperature. So in each category, in each gender category, I want to get minimum value of a temperature and maximum value of a temperature. If you see the output, you have minimum of temperature and maximum of temperature, but you want to rename these columns. Of course, after transforming this, you can use with column rename to rename these columns, but the easiest way is you can directly use alias function, which will alias or which will rename this uh, output column minimum of temperature to min underscore temperature and we can directly specify here so f dot min of temperature and you are using alias function to map the column name let me run this which will give you renamed column so gender min temperature and max temperature awesome in this video we have seen popular basic transformations and action comments that's the end of this video guys if you like this video please do like share and subscribe to my channel and if you are linked in please tag me and share your thoughts on this video and the current ongoing series getting started with PySpark hands on this will motivate me to make more such videos guys meet you in the next video until then keep learning